So we're right at the start of our journey now. It's gonna take in 30 countries around Europe in the next month. Over the last couple of months, we've spent a lot of time preparing for this trip. We've been pouring over the maps, looking for the best routes, seeing where the ferries can help us out. We've managed to squish the 30 countries that we want to get to, the 28 EU countries and Turkey and Albania, which we have to cross to get through them into 30 days. So we're gonna attempt the whole thing in a month. We went to meet Charlie Borman, the legendary adventurer who's done a number of epic road trips himself and he's given us plenty of good advice. And that, that first few, two or three days will be a bit confusing and you, 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 you wanna get something in the can and stuff, but, but, but after a few days, you'll just get into the rhythm of, of, of traveling. We were lucky enough to be loaned a mini clubman for the trip and we popped into Mini's showroom on Park Lane to collect it. We then followed Charlie's advice and tested out our GoPro cameras to find the best angles on the car. So there's three of us on this trip. There's Ollie taking the pictures, there's Simon behind the camera doing the video, and we'll be taking it in turns to drive and working together all the way around to explore and see what we can find and just unearth some of Europe's hidden gems. I can't believe it's the end of week one. We've been to seven countries. We started early on day one in Dover, crossed the channel to Calais, the traditional way. And then we went straight to Belgium, to Waterloo. Our first stop, I guess it was quite fitting, was at the crossroads of Europe, where obviously Napoleon met his match in 1815. After that, we went to Derbouy, which is in southern Belgium, Wallonia, down in the Ardennes and we stayed there in the smallest city in the world, which was beautiful, a really nice fairy tale city. It was a wonderful place, we really wanted to stay. And that's been a kind of theme of the first week. We've been to places where we felt at home, where we've made new friends, and on multiple occasions we've all said, oh, I wish we could stay here for a few more days, or we're gonna come back here. After Belgium, we went to Luxembourg City and checked out the Museum of Modern Art there, the Mudam. Then we crossed the border to Den Bosch in the Netherlands, took a boat trip there, heaven and hell boat trip, learning about Hieronymus Bosch, the artist. This is the 500th anniversary of his death this year. And uh, our boat driver, our captain, Jop, was a bit of a character. A lot of things have a meaning. And the Garden of Earthly Delights, yes, that's of course the paradise, but on the other side also the hell at the same time. That's what, how he painted it. The city has a vibrant social scene focused on its medieval core. Quarter past seven um, in the morning in Holland. Den Bosch. Where are we going? And, um, it's uh, a bit of a rainy day. Hadn't had time to stop for breakfast, so we've got. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and where are we got going? Even less breakfast now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get in the car really quickly before it starts to rain. Yeah. Uh, we're going to Hamburg. Let's go. <laughs> we stopped here in Hamburg for a quick bite to eat at this amazing place. Stram Pauli, which is uh, like a steampunk beach bar down on the river. You can see the, the tankers and the freight ships out behind us, but in here it feels a little bit like a little piece of Barbados in the middle of northern Germany. It's just a flying visit. We've got to hit the road again now. We're heading up to northern Denmark today to a place called Aarhus. We went to an amazing coffee shop, the greatest coffee shop any of us have ever seen. Uh, where they're doing, making scientific coffee with all of these test tubes and incredible equipment and the coffee tastes out of this world. Then we went to meet René Mammon, uh, the Michelin starred chef, the kind of the, the poster boy of, the new poster boy of Danish cuisine and he gave us a cookery lesson and he was great to hang out with, delicious food. And then after that, we drove across the bridge, the bridge, the Oresund Bridge, into Malmo, Sweden. We stayed at a place called Angervallen, which is a working eco-hotel 
where they grow all of their own food and they have a really interesting approach to ethology, the, the science of animals. Rolf, can you tell us a little bit about this, this place where you've been so kind as to host us last night? My main interest is animal welfare and animal rights, and all the animals live free range out of doors, and they can live the lives they're supposed to live. We went to meet Erica, who is a friend of a friend, and picked her up in the car and had a little drive around Stockholm. What do you really like about living in Stockholm? You like the water everywhere. The water is excellent. I love mm. the water. You can actually go for a swim almost everywhere. Do you do that? Do you go yes. swimming quite, like before work or whatever? On lunch breaks. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. If I would take you swimming right now, yeah. I would probably take you to uh, um, the same neighborhood as the Princess Slim in the um, it's called Haga Parken, oh. north of Stockholm, okay. uh, which is a really nice spot, also for just walking, yeah. picnic. We're going around to Bjorn's house. Now Bjorn, apparently, is something of a legend in the barbecue community. Bjorn, you work on something called the Swedish Number. I do answer the telephone occasionally, yes. And, and this, is, this is a number that anyone in the world can call yes. to speak to Sweden? Yes, and you never know who's calling, actually, so it's quite funny. Yeah. That. How do you answer the phone, then? Do you just say, hello? hello hey, hey, hello. Sve no, Sve hello, welcome to Sweden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a random Swede. <laughs> Basically, Stockholm was amazing, Sweden was amazing, and week one has been hectic and busy, but loads of fun. Yeah.